Hi, and welcome to Sociology 5, Introduction to Criminology. I'm Professor Ivan Sanchez at Mount Sac College, and this presentation is entitled Crime and Criminology. In this presentation, we will define deviance and crime. We'll discuss what criminologists do. We'll go over a history of criminology, as well as cover some basic ethics when considering criminological research. Deviance is defined as any behavior or action that departs from the social norm, and the social norm being what is expected of you in society. The critical question we have to ask, is the deviant label applied evenly across all social situations and all individuals? The answer is quite simply no. Deviance is something that is very fluid. It can change depending on who is committing the act, where this act gets committed, and at what point in history this act is being committed. For instance, tattoos are something that for a long time were seen as very deviant, um, but over the years they have gained social acceptance. And so this shows us that deviant behavior is something that is fluid. It changes from time to time, and what is considered deviant in one situation is not considered deviant in another situation. Crime can be defined as a behavior that violates a law, and a law is only a law if it has some power behind it, if it can be, in, if it can be enforced by threat of violence or punishment by a government entity. This brings into question uh, who gets to define laws, and who gets to implement laws. Um, well, one way of seeing it is that crime and implementing criminal law is part of a political process. Uh, a variety of different groups have different uh, power, and so they can get their voices heard and pass certain criminal laws. The picture that we are arriving at is that crime and deviance are social constructs. They are invented by human beings. So what is considered criminal and deviant depends on where you are and at what point in history you are in uh, because societies change and so what is crime and what is deviant also changes. This idea of a social construct is based in a principle of fluidity, uh, meaning that subjective realities get to define uh, what, is a, uh, what is crime and what is deviant whereas an objective reality is something secondary. Uh, it only matters in the foreground because what is really going on is a political battle. And so social constructs are created through these different political battles. So what we come to think of as deviant and crime are a part of a political and cultural process. And then we reinforce these definitions through social interaction by speaking with one another and reinforcing these ideas of right from wrong. Social constructs are heavily influenced by the culture that we live in, the times that we live in, and the places and situations in which actions take place. The criminal justice system is part of this political process. Of all institutions of social control, only the criminal justice system holds power to control and punish crime. The criminal justice system is highly influenced by a political process and is not a straightforward endeavor. There is no one definition of crime that gets applied to everybody equally. The criminal justice system is made up of three parts, the law enforcement, aspect, the court systems, and the corrections aspect of the criminal justice system all take part in the political process of defining and applying the law. This is uh, most evidently seen uh, by some of the statistics that we can see in terms of uh, incarceration rates. So although crime has been declining since the 90s, um, our incarceration rates are increasing. Uh, so this tells us that, uh, that the objective reality of uh, crime decreasing uh, does little to influence the subjective and political process of the criminal justice system to keep increasing the incarceration rate.
there are some major views of crime uh, found in criminology. And so the first one is called the consensus view of crime. And so these are criminologists who believe that most of society agrees with what should be labeled a crime uh, and what shouldn't be labeled a crime. So in their eyes, society is doing what is best for everybody. From a conflict view, or what is often referred to as a plural, pluralist view, society is actually made up of a variety of different groups who have a variety of different definitions of crime and a variety of different experiences of the criminal justice system. And it is only those who have their voices heard who will influence the definition and implementation of criminal law. So now that we have gone over the definition of deviance and crime, as well as the two different views that criminologists hold, we can go more into depth as to what criminology is and what criminologists do. Uh, criminology is a sphere of study, so it's not a discipline in and of itself. It pulls from different disciplines uh, that are interested in studying crime, because many disciplines are interested in studying crime, not just sociology. But criminologists are dedicated to trying to research the criminology or, or criminal enterprise. So in other words, the activities that criminals do. Uh, they're interested in studying society's reaction to crime, as well as the effects that crime has on society and the effects that criminal laws have on society. Some of the things that criminologists do include measuring crime, uh, in other words, involved in tracking criminal trends and the trends of police activity and court decisions and court activity as well. Um, they're also interested in developing theories, understanding and describing criminal behavior, penology, and victimology. We are going to be going over uh, several of these in detail. So criminologists are mainly involved in conducting research and providing information to policymakers uh, to provide them useful information in regards to what decisions to make. Um, so uh, the type of research that we're talking about here are things like qualitative research such as ethnographies and quantitative research as well such as uh, statistical analysis. One of the enterprises that criminologists are involved in is measuring crime. So what exactly is involved with measuring crime? Well, criminologists who measure crime analyze police activity as well as the decisions made by court agencies, this requires them to formulate various techniques to gain this useful information. They are also involved in conducting and analyzing self-report surveys. A self-report survey asks uh, everyday people about the extent of their involvement in crime, whether they have ever uh, been a perpetrator of a crime or whether they have ever been a victim of, of a crime. So the reason that they conduct self-report surveys is to capture some of the crime that goes unreported to police and police agencies. Another enterprise that criminologists are involved in is developing theories. Criminologists use empirical research to develop theories about what causes crimes. There are a variety of different approaches to understanding uh, crime causation and three of the major ones are psychological explanations, biological explanations, and sociological explanations. It's important to remember that there are there is no one true cause of crime. Some criminologists also try to understand and describe certain crime typologies. Uh, so what they do is conduct research on the trends and patterns of different types of crimes such as robberies, murders, um, public disorder crimes. And uh, some examples are Sutherland's white collar crimes and drug robbers. Uh, drug robbery uh, refers to criminals who rob drug dealers. And this type of crime went unnoticed for a long time because uh, the victims were drug dealers themselves, and so since drug dealers cannot go to the police for help or assistance, um, this type of crime went undetected and unstudied for a long time. And so criminologists who are interested in describing crime typologies uh, provide useful information as to the trends and patterns of specific crimes. Criminologists interested in penology are criminologists 
that are concerned with how to control crime. For instance, some of the solutions that have been discussed and researched by criminologists uh, is the idea of rehabilitation versus uh, imprisonment. Uh, the idea of restorative justice, which is uh, something that refers to a form of crime control that requires perpetrators to pay back their victims in some form or another. Um, other considerations are mandatory sentences and capital punishment. All of these different types of crime control are researched by criminologists and they are assessed as to how effective they are in controlling crime as well as what impact they have on society. A criminologist who is interested in victimology uh, is a criminologist that is concerned with the relationship between the perpetrator and the victim of a crime. A lot of times uh, criminologists only focus on the criminal aspect of of a crime uh, and so this puts all the focus on the criminal themselves um, but there's another story to tell as well on the victims end and so victimology is all about studying uh, the victims experiences so criminologists who are interested in uh, victimology conduct surveys to assess who is and who is not a victim of crime as well as develop theories about who becomes a victim of crime and so um, some of the theories that they have come up with is that uh, different people, depending on their social location, have a different probability of becoming victims themselves. And that victims themselves also play a role in their own victimization, uh, something called victim culpability.